is the BPO industry dying? Um, the whole market is changing, as I keep bringing up. But uh, I will not find you contracts. Um, quite simply, a lot of the stuff out there isn't worth doing. What they do is they live off the back of you. They will force your call center into failure. They'll force it into bankruptcy. They will simply just not pay you. They'll run up debts in your call center. Seen it happen, and for some unknown reason, a lot of call centers don't even want to talk about when they lose money due to bad clients, where if people actually networked up, we could get a lot of the crap out of it. Um, because there is certain companies that do it. It's not all in Asia. Um, there's a car insurance company that works out of California, for example. No, it's kind of, no Florida. Um, notorious bad payer. That's the reality. Also, the rules and regulations changed. So, telemarketing is becoming more and more difficult. Um, so, that side of the industry on the outbound sales and stuff is going to continue to decline. It's simply changing. Now, it doesn't mean it's impossible, but you need the customers to engage, especially if you're from the UK or US where um, cold calling is becoming a bit of a problem um, to the point you can be prosecuted and sued for it. Um, what you need to be doing is focusing more on online leads. If people are filling in forms for a car insurance quote or something online, they've actually allowed you to engage with them. But if you phone them up and say, you're interested in car insurance, whatever, that's not how it works. They do that. That's cold calling. They're trying to get rid of cold calling. And I'll be honest with you, I hate the cold calling side of the industry. I hate the fact that it's been unregulated for so long, but the quality of the calls are often dire anyway. <coughs> so the call center industry has created this mess itself. Either you know, if the rules are getting so tight that it's very, very difficult for people to do cold calling, blame all those crappy call centers that were crap at doing them. Um, because those are the guys that do 19 calls a day, but also blame the companies that lack the control in the West to moderate who's calling on their behalf. Because what happens is the American company or UK company goes, oh, we'll use this call center. And we they come to an agreement, say $100 a lead or whatever. And they think, we've only got 20 guys. We'll give it to all these call centers. And we'll give, we'll give them $40. And we'll just take the 60 and put it in our back pocket. Um, and that's been happening for a lot of time. You've got a lot of brokers that basically will take that layer below the client and simply sit there saying, yeah, I've got a call center, yeah, I've got this, and they haven't, they haven't. Um, as I've always stated myself, we've got our own call center, but also we have also have a network of call centers. We make sure it works for everybody when we do stuff. And if it doesn't work, we simply don't do it. Simple as that. Same with the call center's crap. We either help train them or we simply ditch them. Always done that. Now, what's changing in the BPO industry is, I know a lot of people want these inbound calls where it's very easy to just go, hi, um, this is Joan from PayPal or whatever. Um, everybody loves those calls. Even if they're getting people that are a bit irate, it's a lot easier than cold calling. So that market will remain. What's happening, I'm... A lot more now though, a lot of that engagement is going through email and live chat, which changes your call center into a BPO um, hub, because you're not doing just telemarketing, you're not just doing inbound calls, you're doing email responses, you're doing real estate um, advertising, you're doing all the things that people normally do in the West, which can consume time. I've tried to get some people here in Spain into it, but they don't seem to get it. Um, a, friend, a friend of ours owns a real estate agency, and I find that the agents are much better out there selling than dealing with all the day-to-day -day stuff, which is where this sort of stuff can be done by others. But also, it can be done in a way where they're a bit more computer savvy, 
because they work in their specific niche rather than getting a salesperson to do a computer job. It's a bit like me. My forte is more on data analysis. It's more on um, facilities management. It's more on dealing with technical stuff. I'm not a salesperson. I don't even claim to be, never have done. That's not what I do. That's why I focused on things like the servers in the call center, because I have people that are good at sales. Why the hell would I want to be the selling guy when that's not what I do? You know, that's where these sort of industries can grow. Um, because if you start getting something new developing and it, it gets it at the right time, it booms. That's what happened with the solar marketing. It went from there to there in a very short period of time. But when it jumped, what happened was the sales went from a little call center to a big call center in no time. But once it hits that market, it's got to stay there. And quite simply, it couldn't as the solar market changed. And that was my experience. I couldn't adapt to the changes in the market at that time because I didn't have anything overseas. Um, we did do some um, transcription work. We did um, graphics design, website design, other bits and pieces. But we weren't in a position at the time to evolve it into a bigger industry. And off after the earthquakes and stuff, we just thought, you know what, it's time for a break. You know, we we done pretty good out of it. We've got sent still there. We did okay. Now. This is why you need to sit and decide how you're going to evolve your business. And one of the things I want to say is you need to get rid of middlemen. You need rid of them. They are parasitical. They all rip you off and they control the funds direct from client. But also, there's nothing to stop you being the client. It's a bit like the English teaching stuff that we're doing. We want to move away from utilizing other people to find our work, to generate in our work. Um, now, that's a big change, but at the same time, it's not that difficult once you get it running. And it goes for everything. You know, if you're doing transcription work for, say, YouTube or whoever, um, and you're six rungs down the ladder, you're not getting paid well. You need to move to the top. Um, you need to develop a way to push your business into those markets. And it's not an easy slog. I know that. And that's the, that's the whole thing here. It is not easy, but the business is still there. I will say a lot of companies are a bit more hesitant these days in outsourcing stuff because the quality has been so crap in certain instances. Um, I've had work I've had to redo myself that has been outsourced with a very large company um, to their professional Indian company um, and they messed it up big time. It ended up having to be redone. Um, I also know of some major things that happened in the banking industries relating to stuff being outsourced that quite simply, I don't know who in their right mind would outsource stuff that could control all the, <laughs> the banking systems in certain banks, but they did. And then they had a disaster, and then they dealt with it. And then it's like for me, that's just crazy. That's not that's not on. I you know I'd want somebody's head on a platter for that sort of mistake. Um, but there's a lot of stuff out there, and there's a lot of stuff that's not even been evolved yet. There, I'll give you an example of something. Car parts, secondhand car parts. It's a very time-consuming job for somebody in the UK to do. It's an expensive job in the sense of writing all the part numbers and everything down. But having a car come in for to be dismantled and have somebody else sit and catalogue all the parts and put them up for sale, it's not so bad. Somebody in the Philippines sitting there doing that, um, you take a car value, I don't know what the scrap value is these days, but probably say £100, um, but if you take the pair of headlights off, the headlights are worth 65 on the road. This is an example. Front bumper worth 40. Back bumper 40. Rear lights 20, 20 pounds each, 10 pounds each, whatever. Uh, front windscreen 30 pounds. All those bits and pieces are worth money, and there'll be somebody who will buy it from you. Um, 
I know myself for the Volkswagen, I've ordered parts from all over Europe, you know, because obviously I go on eBay and they go, oh, there's not one of these in Spain, but there's one in Germany. Oh, there's one in the Netherlands. Oh, there's one in the UK. So I order the parts here. There is businesses there. There is businesses there. It's just having that market to um, open it yourself. You have to be creative. One of the key things I would say, like I just told you there with the scrap guys, get in touch with them, call them up. See if you can put something together for them because everything comes down to relationships. And a lot of the people have come to me and say, Matt, find me a customer, find me a client. You know what? Get off your backside and do it yourself. You need to build these relationships, not me. You're not my call center, you're your call center. Um, in the same way, if you need assistance with your call center, once it gets going, I'll help you. But there's no way I'm going to go out there and get clients for you. Why would I? I'll help you get you know up and running and recommendations, but I'm not going to turn around and give you clients. Why would I? I know how to run everything else. The only bit I struggle with myself is clients. But I have other projects which pay more money if I can get the right clients. So the point being here is you need to be proactively looking for new markets. You need to be evolving your business, not just going, well, it's worked for the last 10 years, I'm going to stay doing this, because your business will die. It will. There is no way on earth telemarketing will keep running and running. Um, if anything, as the court cases and that increase, it will get harder and harder. You also find that as technology advances, it will get harder and harder to get through the calls. There's, there's a lot of systems out there that will automatically block these um, call center calls these days. So looking for new business developments is the way to go. Looking at reception services, managing uh, hotel bookings, all this sort of stuff, virtual assistants. But the, a lot of people just go virtual assistant as if it's like, well, that's a catch-all. You need to develop what you mean by virtual assistant as well. You need to turn around and say, well, we do graphic design, we do this, we develop your websites, we put somebody on your live chat, we do everything you need on a business. But at the same time, we're continuously developing it. We want all that work. We want anything that can be done remotely to become ours. Uh, in, a, in a sense, I'm still BPOing myself because a lot of the work I doing I do, uh, like last year, and right up, well, right up until yesterday, I was actually still doing work from yesterday, uh, yesterday, is outsourcing. The guys are sending me all the spreadsheet data. I sit and edit it. I analyze the information, analyze all the photographs and all the data, the blueprints, etc., to give them the right information, and then I send it back to them. Now, there's no way I could get a Filipino or anybody else there to do this. Uh, it's not something you just go, oh, I can do that. It took them over 130 people uh, to come across me that could actually do this because it's it's fairly complex in the sense that there's a lot of stuff you need to understand, know, be, be able to cost and how it's all get interconnected. But at the same time, it's still outsourcing. And at the same time, you need to train your staff, you need to upgrade them, you need to get them into courses that increase their ability to be a good BPO person. If you can't, then the industry will beat you. And I will say things like lynda.com and these other training sites are becoming quite useful for a lot of people um, because they're cheap. They're not, they're not easy. I don't find them easy to use. I find them a bit mundane sometimes, but at the same time, the information is in them. Um, and that's what you need to look at. You need to go, okay, can we teach these guys how to use Excel? Can we teach them how to use Microsoft Word? What can they do? Is their English natural? Um, because I find a lot of people have a lot of problems in their English language, which become a problem when they start emailing me or whatever. I used to go, that guy's from India, that guy's from Pakistan, or just by the way they phrase sentences. Um, there's a lot of things in there that can be a problem for 
outsourcing. So you need to sit there and look at what's your next stage in your business. Is it a case that you need to sit and focus on something yourself, get to know it, get to understand it and get it to work? Or is it a case of you need to send 10 people away on how to do Sage um, and get them back and we've got a Sage client, they will use them. Or do you get a client that comes over, trains the guys, and they sort of take some seat leasing. Seat leasing works as well, but you've got to understand most of the businesses out there are looking at cost savings. At some point, they're going to go, okay, thanks for the seats. We've opened another place ourselves. We don't need you anymore. You need to try and keep the partnerships going. The business relationships is the most important thing because you can also say, ah, you know what? I'm having problems with this, the server keeps going down, you go, what does your server work on, What, what what's the problems with it, What what's it, oh well, it's this, this, and you can start to develop a relationship and finding new little niches that you can take control of. That's where the BPO industry is going. Um, the banking and everything, I think, right now is also changing, you know, the the banking wanted to go back to the West and whatever. A lot of people say they're going, they're going more and more outsourced. I would say they're going more and more automated. They're looking at ways to get rid of people completely. So from that point of view, technology is still going to be the way forward long term. Um, programmers and what have you, because there will always be a market for people that can develop things themselves. It's a bit like apps. People went mad for apps for everything. Yeah, I find um, I don't use apps a lot of the time uh, in the sense of apps for the phone or whatever. I find they're bloated. I find that they've, most of them don't do what I want to do. I like a computer. I like having control over it. Um, having this, I'll just move my finger around doesn't fix everything for me. It does. In fact, it doesn't do a lot for me because at the end of the day, my phone's a phone. It's, you know, that's what I bought it for. I didn't buy it to do web design or something. Um, so I do think there's still a market for people that can program specific things. I do think there's a market for improving on apps in the sense there's a lot of crap apps out there um, that may have good ideas. There's a lot of stuff that you can look at, and the reason this video is quite long is because I'm trying to say, don't just assume that I can fix all your problems. A lot of your problems are down to the fact you need to think outside of the box. If you can't do that, your business is already struggling. Thanks for watching.